Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Just the best ones. For Ryan Dempster and Sean Casey, you'll see them on Colbert tomorrow night. It's time now to get you out the MLB Network Showcase game presented by Casamigos Tequila. Matt Baskers and Dan Plesek, J.P. Morosi with the call. Baltimore Orioles try to finish off a sweep of the homestanding Boston Red Sox. A cool bit rainy night on Lansdowne Street. It certainly hasn't dampened the enthusiasm for the Orioles young stars. Jackson Holiday made his major league debut and collected an RBI yesterday. Who knows what's in store for the young phenom tonight. We welcome you to Boston with Dan Plezak, Matt Vaskersia. We mentioned the Orioles at seven and four. Boston a half game back at seven and five. And I think that number qualifies as something of a surprise early on this season. And one of the guys that's led the way for Boston, a new slugging outfielder, Tyler O'Neill. Yeah, I think he got caught in that revolving door in St. Louis, right? A lot of the same kind of players looking for some playing time in the outfield. This guy has a lot of power. Alex Cora told us before the game, uh, he thinks that the fans here in Fenway are going to love this guy has tremendous power good defender runs the bases really well they're really happy they have him in that lineup they're uh, they're going in all directions uh, most of them to left and back up the middle uh, Statcast powered by Google Cloud this guy has light tower power and I think the takeaway here Danny is no cheapies yeah they're look at the exit Vila all well over 100 miles an hour the key for him getting good pitches to hit swinging at strikes so far so good that's what he's been doing he has led the way for Boston for sure if you're talking about the Orioles and who's led the way it's a longer discussion that involves a very good young roster we talked about Jackson Holiday saw him a moment ago yesterday his widely anticipated major league debut he didn't get a base hit maybe that's coming tonight he did collect an RBI in his debut the future and the sky is very high for this young phenom he really is this guy was bent to be a baseball player his father was a tremendous player and listen he's had a lot of pressure on him. one of the things the Orioles have done they've had some really lousy teams the last eight to ten years but Matt they've drafted well they've drafted well with all their first round picks and as good as they've been, Adley Rutschman included, they think this guy, there's his father, Matt, they think that Jackson Holiday may be the best of the bunch. It says a lot when you consider the young talent that the Orioles have put together. All the pedigree is there. MLB Pipeline's number one overall prospect after being a 1-1 in the draft a few short years ago. The numbers in the minor leagues were just hard to ignore and that's among the reasons the Orioles got him up here to the big leagues to make his debut last night and for more on the Orioles youth movement let's send it down to J.P. Morosi. Thanks Matt here on the field tonight we will see five consecutive first round draft picks by the Baltimore Orioles indeed the nesting season for the birds has been many years in the making Adley Rutschman Gunnar Henderson tonight's starting pitcher Grayson Rodriguez Jordan Westberg Colton Kowser, and yes Jackson Holiday last night and Matt that game last night was so illustrative of how good this Baltimore lineup truly is turning a five nothing deficit into a 7-5 win. Colton Kowser got the offense going, driving in two runs. And later on, it was Jordan Westberg with the big blow, a three-run lead-changing home run to center field. Matt, earlier today, I had a conversation with Jackson Holiday, and Colton Kowser was right there. He said, hey, I told him before the game I wanted to be the answer to the trivia question of who was going to be the first player that Jackson Holiday drove in in a major league game. And it is so striking, Matt, the continent.
continuity and the chemistry of this group. Yesterday, Dan Connolly, longtime Baltimore writer, writer, pointed this out. Of the nine players in the Orioles lineup, only one, Ryan O'Hearn, has played a major league game for a franchise other than the Baltimore Orioles. In fact, O'Hearn, the only player in that lineup, and indeed in tonight's lineup, who is 30 years old or older. Matt, it is a youth movement and an impressive one for the Baltimore Orioles. JP, you bet. Young, dynamic Orioles lineup. A lot for any starter to handle tonight. It's the responsibility of Garrett Whitlock. We're back with the lineups and the opening pitch from historic Fenway Park right after this. The Casamigos Tequila MLB Network Showcase is brought to you by Those Who Drink It and sponsored in part by the Walt Disney World Resort and by CDW Make Amazing Happen. We welcome you back to friendly Fenway with uh, less than friendly atmospheric conditions. Cold, damp. It's just springtime in New England, Dan. This that's kind of, all. This feels like one of those late September <laughs> games, doesn't it? Like it does. it's weekday, late September. Kind of football in the air. It's yeah. cold, damp. Yeah, it uh, the early trappings of the season. How about some numbers for you to swirl around, courtesy of BetMGM? Uh, the experts have put the total at eight and a half on this one, with the Orioles going off as slight favorites to win tonight and perhaps win a series. Something that Brandon Hyde hopes happens for his birds. They've given up some runs in this series, have the Orioles. In fact, five runs allowed by the Baltimore pitching staff last night, tied the most that they've given up in any game this year. The good news for them is that their lineup is so loud and rambunctious, they've been able to overcome that. Yeah, think about this. They have two guys in the rotation, Matt, that were big parts last year. Kyle Bradish had a great year. John Means, a lefty, that they're hoping is going to be ready sooner than later. They feel in the next four to six weeks they're going to get both of those guys back into the mix. And this starting rotation is going to have an entirely different look than the one that they have right now. For sure. And it's got a little different look to the lineup as well with Jackson Holiday ready to play game two in his major league career. In fact, speaking of the Orioles lineup, they haven't changed it much since opening day with the exception, the notable exception of Holiday coming up. Henderson, Rutschman, and Santander, Ryan O'Hearn, Ryan Mountcastle, Cedric Mullins, exclusively a left-handed batter these days. Kowser, Westberg, and Holiday make out the rest of the Orioles' progressive lineup here tonight. You know, when you look at that lineup, Cedric Mullins stuck out a couple of years ago. Right now, I don't want to say he's an afterthought, but you're talking about there might be this Orioles team, the best stable of young position players in the game of baseball. And what's scary, they have more on the way in double and triple A. We'll get into that certainly with J.P. Morosi as we continue here tonight on the other side for the Red Sox. They got off to such a great start. One of their two West Coast swings resulted in a 7 and 3 homecoming to Fenway when they had their home opener here on Tuesday since getting back home however Alex Cora and his guys have dropped two straight they hope to get back on track tonight and they have some notable changes in their lineup as well with uh, Rafi Devers getting a day off and we'll get to that when we set their lineup in the bottom of the first it's Jeremy Reha calling balls and strikes he has been friendly on the corners lower in the strike zone throughout his umpiring career and that tendency could greatly benefit tonight's Red Sox starter 27 year old Garrett Whitlock on the mound for Boston to make start number three on his campaign. Yeah this guy has a big arm too Matt. He's kind of bounced around between the rotation and the bullpen mid to upper 90s fastball. One of the things that the Red Sox have tried to do this year by the way their starters ERA just a tad over one so far through 11 games but their starting rotation has been good. Whitlock four pitch mix this guy really gets it up there good breaking ball and one of the things he likes to do they want to use more off speed pitches than using the fastball. We're going to look inside the hood of what makes Garrett Whitlock so good when he is good. Look at the arsenal. He'll throw the change up and it's a good one about 28 percent of the time. Very rarely do you see a starting pitcher. You look up and you see a change up is mainly his go to pitch. He's throwing less sinkers than he did last year. He's added that sweeper and a little cutter that he'll mix into lefties. Yeah it's been a revised arsenal and a couple of tweaks on existing pitches 
his gyro slider or bullet slider depending on uh, which writer you want to read has gotten a lot of attention here in greater New England and the Red Sox think that that could be the key to unlocking not only more innings but more success for Garrett Whitlock and so far so good boy he has looked really sharp in his nine and a third as you talk about Danny threw a career high hundred and one pitches in his last outing on Saturday in Anaheim and he's ready to go tonight against a tough opposing lineup a lot of left handed batters in this lineup for Brandon Hyde as we mentioned earlier Andrew Bailey has done such a great job pictured here with this young Red Sox staff and we're underway at the fence. <laughs> 